Earth is referred to as being carbon-based because the building blocks of life are organic compounds. Carbon atoms form the basis of complex molecules because they form four stable covalent bonds and thus combine to each other to form long branching chains of infinite variety. In addition to being able to bind to other carbon atoms, carbon can readily form stable bonds with many other types of atoms. This ability to bind to other carbon atoms, as well as atoms of other elements, makes carbon unique in its ability to form diverse, complex molecules, such as carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. A carbohydrate is an organic molecule containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbon makes up the backbone of carbohydrates, and hydrogen and oxygen bind to this backbone, both as individual atoms or as hydroxyl groups. Carbohydrates are synthesized by plants during photosynthesis, and they are the primary energy source for living things. In addition to serving as an energy source, some carbohydrates play a structural role by providing the physical framework of biological structures, such as cellulose giving plants rigid cell walls, or chitin forming the hard bodies of insects. Lipids, like carbohydrates, also serve as an energy source, in addition to playing several other roles. But the molecular structure is very different from that of a carbohydrate. Lipids are long-chain hydrocarbons that are hydrophobic. In other words, they don't mix well with water. Typically, lipids have a large charged or nonpolar region and a small charged or polar region. Fats, steroids, phospholipids, and waxes are all examples of lipids, and they all play different functions. Lauric acid is an example of a fat found in coconut oil, which provides stored energy to cells. Cholesterol is an example of a steroid and is used by the human body to make hormones such as estrogen and testosterone, which regulate body functions such as sexual reproductive cycles and growth and development. Phospholipids found in the cell membrane have two long nonpolar tails and a polar head. In the aqueous environment, both within and surrounding the cells, two layers of phospholipids line up with the tails toward each other and their heads facing out, forming the phospholipid bilayer. The lipid molecules slide freely past each other within each side of the bilayer, giving the cell flexibility. The lipid molecules can also move to allow substances to pass through the layer, given the cell permeability. Finally, waxes are found on the leaves of certain plants, such as cactus and aloe plants, helping plants to conserve water. The third group of biological molecules are proteins, probably the most diverse of the four groups, and they're involved in almost every aspect of a living organism. Proteins are composed of smaller subunits called amino acids, organic molecules that contain a carboxyl group and an amino group. Each amino acid also contains a side chain that gives it a specific shape and function and consists of one or more atoms. Humans use 20 amino acids to make the proteins that build, maintain, and repair cells. The specific sequence and number of amino acids in a protein determines the protein's shape and therefore its function. A change in just one amino acid can result in a protein losing its function. For example, sickle cell disease is caused by the substitution of valine for glutamic acid in the protein hemoglobin. This protein carries oxygen in red blood cells. This one change alone results in blood cells that are sickle in shape. These blood cells tend to clog in tiny blood vessels, resulting in inadequate blood flow in those affected. The last group of biological molecules, nucleic acids, play an important role in storing and transmitting hereditary information. The nucleic acid people are most familiar with is deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, an organic molecule containing coded instructions for the processes vital to life, which is found in all organisms. Another type of nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid, or RNA, is also present in living things and plays several roles. Messenger RNA carries genetic messages out of the nucleus. Ribosomal RNA is the main component of ribosomes, the protein-making organelles of all cells. And transfer RNA is involved in bringing amino acids to the ribosome to make proteins. 
The structure of DNA and RNA are similar in that they're both made up of small subunits called nucleotides. These are organic molecules, each consisting of a 5-carbon sugar, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. The nitrogenous base of DNA can be one of four types, adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. DNA does not exist as a single polymer chain, but rather as two long chains, each with a repeating sugar phosphate pattern, with paired bases in the middle, resulting in a double helix. The bases always pair in the same way, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. RNA has a structure similar to DNA, as it also consists of nucleotides, but there are a few differences. The sugar in RNA is ribose instead of deoxyribose. The base uracil is used instead of thymine. RNA forms shorter polymer chains than DNA, and RNA is usually single-stranded rather than double-stranded.